I always think it's a good idea to review a little bit about acid base from what you may or may not remember from chemistry a long time ago. And of course, acid base in the body, really our whole goal in understanding it and realizing it is it's all about what our pH is because our body and our cells work at a very narrow pH range. And of course, our pH is a result of our concentration of hydrogen ions. And so our body has different ways of dealing with hydrogen ion amounts uh, and how it actually works. And one of them is via the kidneys. So our kidneys, of course, can work in a couple different ways. And one of them is to excrete hydrogen ion. But another really important one, this writing isn't working so well, is actually retaining bicarbonate. And we've talked some about this and we'll talk more about it. So we wanna retain bicarbonate because of course bicarbonate is an extremely important part. It's a main buffer actually within the body. We're gonna talk about this fun equation that we won't really use a lot. We just use it for illustration purposes. And that's where hydrogen ion and bicarbonate actually combine and I'll tell you about that in a second. So. Our metabolic control of acid base includes our kidney. So that's what I just did there. But it also includes essentially our vessels. And those are our blood buffers. And so these buffers include, of course, mostly bicarbonate, uh, but it also includes some intracellular protein buffers, and it even includes phosphate buffers. And phosphate buffers are actually the most um, efficient, but they're present in very small amounts. Bicarbonate is the most abundant buffer, and protein buffers, again, are intracellularly. So we mostly focus on bicarbonate since it's the most, kind of, um, the biggest. And so these are our metabolic buffers, and these take different amount of time. So this is usually around in seconds, these buffers. So the buffers in our body work in seconds. Whereas our kidney works usually in hours to days. And then we also have respiratory control of our acid base. And so that is obviously our lungs. So here's respiratory. And we'll draw some lungs. And how the lungs actually work is they exhale CO2. And this is not TCO2, this is PCO2 for pulmonary. So remember that this is also TCO2, which is bicarbonate. So now we're talking about PCO2. And why that happens is we're gonna go back up to our equation for a second. So there's an intermediary step that we're not gonna really talk about. And eventually this all gets converted, so bicarbonate combines with hydrogen ion and that can work within the vessels uh, and this whole thing gets converted to water and it gets converted to CO2 and you can of course exhale CO2. So you exhale CO2 and that's actually a respiratory acid while bicarbonate of course is our base and it titrates away acids, because remember this whole goal is getting rid of acid or dealing with acids, hydrogen ion. And so you exhale PCO2 as our respiratory acid, and of course, we all know you have to breathe frequently, and so this happens in minutes. So if you hold your breath, you can give yourself a slight respiratory acidosis. If you exhale a lot, so if you hyperventilate, um, or if you're tachypnic, that means that you get rid of more respiratory acid and so you can become alkalotic. So along with the anion gap talk, let's just remember what acids and bases are, right? So an acid can donate a proton, right? So it can, here's, it's normally bound with its hydrogen ion. So it donates this, or it essentially dissociates, and the stronger an acid is, the more likely the hydrogen ion dissociates. And so now you have more free hydrogen ion in circulation. And so it's a strong acid when there's more free acid, excuse me, free hydrogen ion in circulation. Now a base, of course, accepts a hydrogen ion, which would then 
decrease our hydrogen ion concentration in circulation, where an acid increases it because our hydrogen ion is going towards our base. And so when we talk about things like acids in the body, so those clue things, the ketones, lactic acid, uremic acids, and ethylene glycol, these are, of course, all acids, and they're acids, and essentially they're just then donating these free hydrogen ions. And so that is actually what potentially can lower our pH. You'll see in the notes that it talks about a conjugate base, and that's only in there for the chemists in the room. You don't have to know anything specifically about that. So if you haven't watched the anion gap video yet, so anions are, again, this, this is, so over here is our unmeasured cations, and our unmeasured anions are on this side, and that is what our anion gap is. And of course, it's greater than our positives. And again, these, when it's increased, indicates clue. So I'm going to show you a scenario of why we also look at our bicarb, because again, our bicarb is our buffer. And if you think about this again, so these again are acids, and so they're liberating hydrogen ions, which of course then wind up being the positive part of it. So these are actually negatively charged, not that that really is that important for you to realize. Okay, so now imagine a situation where you have an unmeasured anion, so one of clue, and your anion gap is increased. And so what happens, I think it's easiest to visualize, is this part increases because this entire length, this remains the same, because of course positive and negatives have to equal one another. So now this has increased, so we have this excess and anion gap, and of course this is that calculation. Again, anion gap equals our positives. minus our negatives. And so that increases. And of course, why bicarbonate decreases is because it's being used to titrate away these acids. And so when this our anion gap is increased, again, we automatically call that a titrational metabolic acidosis. And we already learned that when our bicarbonate is decreased, we call that a metabolic acidosis. But you need more information to know what kind of metabolic acidosis it is. And one of those little features is the increase in anion gap. And in this, you can see that the chloride actually remains the same. And so remember, we talked about differences between sodium and chloride. There are distinct things that can cause decreases in, in, or increases in chloride relative to sodium. And we'll talk about that when we talk about um, the different types of metabolic acidosis. So we're going to revisit this last concept a few more times. So all of these represent kind of the normal anion side of that, um, of the bar graphs. And so let's first talk about what we just talked about, which is a titrational metabolic acidosis. So this, of course, means that we have an increase in our anion gap, which then tells us, of course, that there's clue. And with this increase means, so this is now increasing, that we expect, of course, a decrease in bicarbonate. So you have a decrease in bicarbonate, or TCO2, an increase in anion gap, and a normal chloride. So that's a titrational metabolic acidosis, and of course, bicarbonate is a base. So we briefly talked about um, a metabolic alkalosis. And an alkalosis, of course, would mean that if you understand that bicarbonate's a base, then you would expect bicarbonate to increase, and that's exactly what happens. And why it increases isn't because it's actually increasing, it's because you're losing chloride. So in this case, we have a decrease in chloride, an increase in bicarbonate, and our anion gap is unchanged, and these are just considered simple acid-base disturbances. 
And a metabolic alkalosis is due to a loss of HCL. And of course, we lose HCL most often due to vomiting if we're a monogastric um, or trapped in the abomasum in large animals and then sort of internal vomiting or ileus within horses. And so while our first one, of course, was due to our increase in clue, that was our titrational metabolic acidosis, our metabolic alkalosis or an increase in bicarbonate was due to a loss of hydrochloric acid, usually again from vomiting, and then you have a normal anion gap. And lastly, the one that I think is the kind of most confusing is something called a loss metabolic acidosis, also called the secretional metabolic acidosis. And when we talk about sodium versus chloride, this is what we talk about. And in this case, you're actually losing bicarbonate. And so bicarbonate is going away. And it's because, we'll just cover it up completely, and then we'll just rewrite it so we remember. And it's because you're actually losing bicarbonate. And where can you lose bicarbonate? Well, most common is renal loss, especially renal tubular injury. But in large, large animals, you can lose it through the saliva with choke. You can also lose it in neonates, uh, especially with diarrhea, so GI loss. And we'll cover this again. So in this case, of course, you have an increase in chloride, and that would be versus what's happening with your sodium. And so this is a loss metabolic acidosis, and it's, again, a loss of bicarb. And we will revisit these uh, more um, this week.